I came back out and I was rolling, man. And um, uh, and I had spoken to you off the air, man. I almost lost it all twice. And this time, I was very successful doing all types of shows and expos, man, making making crazy money. And uh, my my wife called me one day in the summertime, and I, I'll condense the story. She was at Long Island. My wife is from Long Island, and um, my son was six months old and the soft spot in my son's head started to swell mm -hmm. so my wife is like yo we got I'm gonna take him to the doctor and I'm over there working on a show I'm right in the middle of a, my biggest show at the time and um took him to the doctor they did a scan they found that it was a tumor first they didn't think it was cancerous and then once we brought him back to Philly at Children's Hospital in Philly they did a biopsy he had what was called a rhabdoid tumor which was a cancerous brain tumor that is very aggressive. So only like one in a million kids would get it. And so my son had it. So now you're looking at the Jones family. My wife has to stay home because she has to take care of my son. Um, she had all the benefits, you know, in life, I mean, health insurance and all that. And so now I'm right in the middle of my biggest show. I'm distraught, but I know the show must go on because I got these people money. I got I to gotta push through. Push through that show, Sean. And I didn't even give myself time to really think. And right after that show, bro, everything just kind of crashed down on. That show was keeping my focus off of the sorrow and the, uh, you know, the angst that we were going through. And um, subsequent to that show, man, some of my other shows didn't kick off that well. Uh, we're fighting for my son's life. He battled 11 months. And at 17 months, we lost him. And... Um, <laughs> Yeah, so I'm so when you're talking about entrepreneurship, I'm not just dealing with you know ups and downs of entrepreneurship, I'm dealing with the emotional stress, uh, the financial stress now. Because after that, that last show, man, everything kind of just went, went, went to the you know, <laughs> went down. I'll put it like this it's a PG show, so <laughs> went down. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, man, what am I gonna do now? And uh, we just lost our son. My wife is back to work, but it's crazy in our household, man. So, but I get back on the horse and make a, you know, my first comeback. So it's crazy, man. It's crazy. Now you yeah, want to hear about that? <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. Nah, well, did you want some questions? Because I can tell you what my first comeback was, or did you want to uh, address what I was just saying? No, I was just, I was just going to say, you know, that is one club that no parent wants to belong to. Exactly. You know, so, so I can only imagine what you were going through at the time. Um, it's crazy, so bro. Obviously, my condolences. Thank to you. you. Thank you. And 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 your wife. That's yeah. very very difficult to bounce back from. And yeah, bro. That, how did you bounce back? My faith, man. My faith, brother. So, um, you know, I know there's people that probably you got atheists, you got agnostics, probably you got people that end up whatever different religion or whatever. But for me, I'm a Christian. And mm -hmm. so my faith, and I believe that I know that I'll see my son again. So while I'm here for this short time, you know, on this earth, in this form, I'm going to do what I need to do. And when it's my time to transition, I know he'll be there waiting for me. So that's how we got through it. And I do want to say this to anybody. I don't care if you're an entrepreneur or you work in corporate. A lot of times the death of a child can really affect marriages. And so I'm blessed to have a, a queen by my side that we stuck together. It, you know, we had tough times, obviously, but we stuck together and we held our family because we had my, my daughters were still there. So we had to make sure that our home was a happy home for my daughters as they continued to grow. And I couldn't have done that without without my, my wife. So I got to definitely uh, shout her out because it's, it takes two. It's a unit. And um if my wife, you know, my immediate family, friends, and that's how we got through it, and, and obviously our faith, man. That's how we, we press forward. You know, I want to dig a little deeper into that. Yeah, because no problem. As an entrepreneur, having that support system is key. Um, Big time. You know, your wife stood by your side while you out there, you, you, you Gambling, the family finances. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, you want some in the room listening? <laughs> yeah, man, it, it, it sounds good to be like you know I'm betting on myself. 
But right. she's the one out there going and getting that, you know, exactly. check that she knows is going to be on the on, on, in the bank account every other week. Yep. Now y'all go and you lose your son. <laughs> like you said, you almost lost it all. Oh, how yeah. how close were you, number one, to, to being in financial ruins, but number two, losing your family? Oh, um, I never... I'll say this about my wife. She was never an entrepreneur and she's grown to, you know, understand what being the, the, the spouse of an entrepreneur is. Um, we had something, man, that I, I'm, I'm blessed with because we could argue whatever, but that she's my best friend. We're each other's best friend. And I know when the chips are down, she may yak, 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 tell me what she feels. I respect that. But I know that she's got my back. So I was never worried about that. Um, in terms of losing it all, now, if I told you the stress level in the Jones family wasn't off the charts, I'd be lying to your family, and I'm not going to do that. So I'll give you a, a real-life example. So um, we ha if everybody looked at us from the outside, they think, oh, they 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 doing well. You know, two nice cars in the, you know, in the driveway, you know, house, built a new house, I think, about three years. It's only three years old. You know, kids look good and all that stuff. Family looks healthy, not knowing what we had been dealing with. And so when you talk about a low point, man, one night, this is about a month before my son uh, passed, uh, my oldest daughter's room was in the front of the house. And we had a van at the time. You know, we got three kids. And my oldest daughter woke me up. She said, Daddy, there's somebody out front. It's about three in the morning. I'm like, what? So I, I look out the window, I see a repo man, right? So I'm transparent on my podcast too. I see the repo man. This truck now, or this van, was the van my wife used to take my son to the hospital, at, you know, every couple of days. So, you know, my son actually had to have a feeding tube and he had all types of stuff because of the chemo he didn't want to eat. And so they had to, you know, we had to feed him through a, through a tube. And so I run outside in my socks, man. It's probably about May. And uh, I said, I said, bro. And uh, I said, man, look, I said, I, you know, I just literally just made a payment for the car probably about three days ago. And then he was like, well, yeah, they, you know, but it wasn't enough. And I said, well, they didn't tell me that. They said, you know, I could make a partial payment to make another. He said, man, I'm gonna have to take this car and I'm gonna keep this PG. I said, brother, I said, I know you have nothing to do with this. I said, but my son is in chemo. Uh, he has brain cancer. I said, you can come on in. I'll show you all the stuff. He said, man, I can't do that. I said, well, you're going to have to have two choices, bro. Either you're going to put that car down or you're going to need to call the police. What should, what, what you going to do? I said, because I'm, I'm going to give it to you the PG way. You about to get it. <laughs> you about to get you about to get this this Philly combo on you, right? And so and the brother looked at me, he's actually a white guy. He looked at me, he said, Man, he said, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna put the truck down for you, the car down. And he and he rolled out. But then my wife seeing that, we going through all this financial distress. And like I said, bro, I can laugh at it now, <laughs> but but back then that that was just fuel to the fire, man. And it, it was crazy, man. So um, that's how close I was. Cars, the mortgage was behind. And then once again, though, you know, you got to rise from the ashes, man, for, like the Phoenix. And that was my next move. <laughs> and and, and uh, before we go into your next move, I want to just zone in for one second. Because yeah. th th what you're saying, I love, number one, your honesty yeah. and, and your transparency and your willingness to, to put it all out there because... People, you understand this road of, of entrepreneurship, this ain't easy. Mm -hmm. This, this, no matter how much you betting on yourself, no matter how big your idea is, usually before you hit it out the park, you're gonna be having this type of story. There's not an entrepreneur I know who can't say they almost lost it all at least once. And that's at least, at least most, most times they've lost it at least two or three times before they, you know, are now sitting at the top of the hill and everybody's looking at them as the shining example. So if right. you're going through it, I cannot say this enough. It is part of the process.
What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.